Hello and welcome, listeners, to this, the 28th episode of the Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast. I'm Jacob, and this episode I'm joined by... Dan. Duncan. Jack. John. And we're glad to have you with us. Uh, this is our first show of 2023. We have made it uh, out of the initial year that we began this broadcast, which is pretty exciting. Uh, holidays behind us, and... Uh, with those, uh, we do still have a couple ongoing event shouts. Uh, of course, we want to continue to encourage our listeners to look at and, if able, uh, register for the Adepticon events. Uh, I'm not sure if those have been posted yet or not, um, but uh, we know that that's something that uh, a number of members, not only of this show, but the community, really like to attend. A uh, very highly prized event. Uh, likewise, we do have the Heresy Barn kickoff for the 2023 event season. Uh, that will be going on February 11th at the Battle Barn in Martinsville, Indiana. Uh, event details should be available on Facebook. Uh, past that, I know uh, Texas uh, is squaring up for an event kickoff. Uh, might still be pinning down some of the details there, but uh, as always, make sure that you uh, keep an eye on our page uh, as we make sure that we're able to uh, let event organizers post uh, as details change and as events become... Um, We've got the yeah. January 6th, which will probably come around the time this drops. Um, we've got the first Battle for Texas event going on. Uh, I will be bringing some special goodies for everyone attending and some special prizes as well. Not podcast, but um, at the event and, and during the wrap-up. Excellent. Uh, as we come out of uh, the holiday hangover, I'm not sure if anybody has too much ho uh, hobby progress to report, but I figured I'd open the floor just in case somebody did. Uh, yeah. I'll go first. I... No. Oh, go ahead, John. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is my turn to start uh, since I got a whole bunch done. <laughs> so uh, I was lucky I had the the week between Christmas and New Year's off. So I got uh, six, I'm sorry, nine rhinos uh, base coated, highlighted, and sealed for decals. And then uh, I decaled six of those rhinos. Uh, I also got base coated and sealed and ready for decals. Uh, three whirlwinds, which I got one of those decaled. I got six sabers painted and ready for decals and then i started today building some more tt combat horrible no good instruction having uh, mdf terrain which is uh some silly looking chairs you get two h's and two rectangles per chair and you're supposed to figure it out yourself there's no guides there's no instructions there's no nothing uh, i'm just gluing three h's together and calling it a day um so i want to have some chairs for my bar in my necromunda terrain and then uh smoke some meat for the new year, and uh, that's everything. Very what exciting. About, what about you, Jeff? For my hobby progress, has been continuing to work on Fulmataris uh, and um, Locataris, along with apparently three new Praetors and a uh, big K. Um, getting all of those deckled up today. Uh, and then uh, apparently my in laws decided I need a travel hobby kit, so they I've been trying to figure out what I'm putting in that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, if the last couple episodes have taught me anything, uh, can't you just take your carry on, which is basically just Duncan's hobby station from home, and put it in there? I don't no, understand. I, know. I, have, I need to have another one in addition to that one. Um, I've got this big, huge compressor over here. We can stick one of the spare airbrushes in it. Um, I've got a whole bunch of extra GW paints we can throw in there. <laughs> Um, I'm sure you have all the hobby tools I will ever need to borrow at an event, so that'll be perfect. Um, uh, John, what else should we stick in there that jo that Jack can carry around for us? Uh, every paint that we've possibly touched in our army. Definitely tons of super glue and nippers. Yep, yep. Um, I'll go ahead and, and throw in a... Uh, hey, hey. Hey, Dan, suddenly you're, the, you're my favorite one on this podcast beside Jacob right now. So what did you do? <laughs> so I um, did a lot of building. So um, getting my secret Santa inspired me to get back to working on my Blood Angels. So I had previously built a tactical unit and an assault squad and a Kratos. I built the rest of another tactical squad, and I'm almost done with five Dawnbreakers, including I wanted the sergeant dude whatever to have an axe um 
So I went ahead and I'm in the middle of doing a conversion that takes the big, huge axe from the Praetor and the Age of Darkness box set and putting that on a Dawnbreaker, which I think actually turned out pretty cool. Um, Duncan did give me the advice to to block off the Akia, Akila, whatever. Akila. And, and uh, so I put a nice blood drop on there um, from some of the Cromlech stuff I have. Um, so that's been my heresy hobby plus purchases in addition to uh, the stuff I got um, from my army from Secret Santa with a bunch of Dawnbreaker or more Dawnbreakers, uh, the, the Lastrius, Syncantius, whatever, the Jump Pack, Blood Angels, Dreadnought, um, Sanguinius, and some Recon Marines. I also put another order in where I'm getting a Lancer um uh and another lorgar so i can cut that up and do that diorama at some point and karn so i can build my argal karn buddy list um i think i had mentioned i bought the the box set of the armagers and the knight um so that gives me a list where i'll have four knights and the armagers because everyone needs a couple of 3500 point um built unpainted armies sitting on the shelf right i mean that's pretty much what you know, we all strive for, or maybe don't, but I'm going to end up having. <laughs> and then on top of that, I've been doing a bunch of NPCs and 3D bits. So my family at the beginning of 2020, coincidentally going into lockdown, um, it was planned before that, got into a game called Gloomhaven. And I 3D printed all of the um, terrain and pulled out a ton of D&D miniatures and bought some here and there and old fantasy miniatures and stuff. Um, so we play where it's all um, just a cardboard um, board, but everything else on it is 3D miniatures and terrain. And so Frosthaven finally came out as the sequin or the follow-up, which I kickstarted right around the time we started playing New Haven. And so we played our first Frosthaven scenario Friday. So I've also been working on um, doing up a bunch of D&D miniatures and the PC characters for Frosthaven. Um, so we can continue to play that as a family in with three dimensional models instead of the standees that come with the so, um Been doing a lot of that. A lot of that's just simple contrast painting, quick down and dirty, making miniatures look cool. Um, but it's fun to you know leave them and sit on the table and paint. And with that, I think we'll move to Jacob. Yeah, I uh, I had a lot of travel on my plate this holiday season. Uh, ended up dodging uh, the worst of the bad weather front uh, to make it down to my sister's place in South Carolina. Had a really good time there. Had a good uh, holiday. I made it back after a couple days. Just kind of been working around the house, um, laying down uh, kind of the groundwork and what we're doing going forward with my place. Uh, scouting. That. Very excited. Uh, just not uh, not the traditional hobby that we're in for. Uh, I'm I'm excited though to uh, now now that the holidays try to try to get that army uh, back up and running, uh, especially because all my foam just started for it and uh, my battle tech mate. Very excited by that. Oh, uh, from there we've got a couple G Dub announcements to catch up on, don't we, gentlemen? Say what I did too. No, we only talk about people's progress here. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I assembled uh, a single contemptor dread. That's it. I spent money, so. There we go. That was really quick. Still good though. Spending yeah, I. Week. Oh, I, I did one last thing. I got a uh, a set of uh, Kalinsky sable brushes for Christmas. I don't know how much they cost, but um, we're gonna see how good they are. What don't even know. Um, it says AIT Art Premium. I have no idea where they come from, how much they cost, or anything like that. Because it was literally just a gift I was given by one of my two friends who were at the uh, Christmas party I was at. So it costs something, and sometime in the next week or so, I'll figure out how they paint. Biggest thing I recommend is use brush soap and clean them. I don't know if you do that with So, uh, So my normal brushes are a that I use for darn near everything, because I have several of them, is uh, a Citadel detail brush from, like, 2010. And, um, yeah, I just use that and clean it with uh, water and soap. Not, not, like, brush soap, just, like... A little bit of uh, Dawn. Yeah. I don't take a lot better that... care of your brush than I do. I just buy the $5 Hobby Lobby pack, and it works for one project. They get downgraded to basing or dry brush brushes, and then after that, they get downgraded to trash. Is that the red handle, uh, Duncan? Um, 
I have one of those as well, but that's the a standard. Red handled Citadel brushes were actually Kalinsky Sable brushes. Uh, that one, I do have one red handle, and that is a standard, not a, uh, a detail. Okay. And okay. The, other, the one I use a lot of is just the detail itself. I actually somewhere have one. Amazingly, after sitting in a box without a cap on it. Before, You're coming through really muffled, Dan. Sorry. I'm not sure why. Come and goes. Maybe my inner. That's what it is. But yeah, that, that's all I did. I just got stuff and built a dude. Just. But it sounds like then, with Duncan's hobby progress squared up, we're ready to talk about the announcements. Sounds good to me. I really need to put a member of our cast on blast um, in, in a oh. positive way, uh, because Jamie absolutely called us seeing Horace before the end of the year. He did. He, he did. did. He absolutely did. I had completely forgotten about it uh, in the thought that, like, oh, yeah, that was already announced and out. But, like, Games Workshop seems to be doing this, like, I, I'll say it's almost like a video game level of thing where, like, they announce that something exists and they'll show it off, but then it's not available for order or pre-order or anything. So they put it away and then they bring it back out, like the week or two before they put it on order. It's just very strange. Yeah, I thought the Ultramarine heads were out and I went to order them and they aren't there. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, a bit a bit fumbly. Um and I don't I don't know if that's because of like logistics and supply chain problems or if this is just how Games Workshop operates now. But it's it'll be interesting to keep our finger on the pulse of that as we go through this year. Uh, we also got a couple, like, black silhouette uh, teaser images, didn't we? Yes. We did. And so, one really makes me angry. Yeah, so what uh, What one makes you angry? Um, this one looks remarkably like a jet bike. Yeah, and that's a, that's a spot where I was dead wrong on our last show. I really thought that we would see the javelin before we saw the jet bike kit go to plastic, but uh, a couple of you guys, uh, John, I think, was... One of you who noticed that the jet bikes had gone off Forge World's site, uh, which apparently was was absolutely a precursor to this. I didn't expect that. You're all welcome. Uh, I'll be taking bribes for whatever army I want to paint next. You can have it in plastic <laughs> for three months. Well, if, if I know you well, I'll just go ahead and uh, say you probably want another Ultramarine. Yeah, but what type of Ultramarine do you want me to? Because you'll get it in plastic in three months after I finish the army. <laughs> valid point, valid point. Um, Salt Marines, that's what I want. Full of Antares. Oh, wait, no way. I'm painting no, those. No, no one wants those. Nobody Lock wants Full Antares. Look at No way. I'm painting those. What'd you use oh, for your Look at Um, I'm going to say probably like four or five different kits. That's what I do. What, what Jack really wants is he wants Nemesis Destroyers. Again, sure. not units. <laughs> theming of an army. Oh, oh theming. Really? Theming. Um, uh, Recon Company. Okay. Is, that, okay. is that still a thing? I mean, they yeah. have, those models are already out, though. Yeah. No worries. They're in plastic, though. That's true. Anyway. Yeah, that 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 is, so we yeah. also have something that looks like a Psyker, maybe. Um, maybe with an Eye of Horus. Maybe with a Psychic Hood. Um, maybe uh, throwing up the Devil Horns with his right arm. I'm not really sure. Oh yeah, where you're thinking it's uh it's either a new summoner model in plastic or from Forge World. Y yeah. Yeah, because I guess what our last summoner was that uh, cataphracty convention exclusive model. Might be all right yep. to to see something come back for uh oh it's um it's the esoterist. That's the only console choice that we don't have. Well, that's a lie. I guess the Armistos we don't technically have a standalone model for either, but. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we're we're gonna be getting a couple new console models this year. It'll be what the Esoterist, the Armistos. Um, still no official model for the Warmonger as well. Or did the Warmonger get Legacy PDF? I forget. Yeah, he was PDF. He's PDF. Ah, okay. So yeah, uh, seems like the Armistos and uh. And the Esoteris, then, we've got a real chance of seeing this year, especially if we've uh, already got a preview of possible Esoteris models. That's pretty and neat. there's a, a guy that looks an awful lot like a really decked out, flared out assassin that I think you probably were pretty spot on and that we have an exodus. I don't, I yes. I don't, think, I don't think that's a, an exodus. That looks like something with a uh, 
like a possessed kind of claw. Oh, we might be looking at different silhouettes. Because I, I yeah. agree, I think we do have a demon assassin there in one of the silhouettes, like the cloven hooves, the the big warp mutated claw. Um, but the the guy who's got the big nemesis bolt rifle looking thing, that's what I'm thinking is it. Who, who, who has like the plume that was a little tricky preview because the article had four of the screenshots snapshotted into the article but there's five things previewed in the video if you watch the video so if you have to stop gap and watch the video to get all five of them I'm... so that same video maybe i'm crazy but i thought that was not part of the heresy video i could be very wrong well i here, I, I don't well, keep up with everything. Video. They do have a silhouette of the what's the stupid um other Spartan chassis super heavy? Cerebrus. Cerebrus. Yeah. Cerebrus. You have a, a uh sil silhouette of that, if I could talk. Um and then you have a big goofy looking dude with a bolter with a backpack that looks like it could have an eye and an antenna. I see that. A Yep. Apparently, for some reason, that's also shown, or something similar is shown in the 40K version. I did not watch the 40K version, I'm not going to lie. Oh, here's, no, here's an interesting thought. So, that guy kind of looks like a master of signals, right? With the what big if, book gun? What if they did another box set, and they had bikes and marines, and the characters, instead of Praetors, they had those in plastic. And like mm -hmm. they had an assassin model and a master signal model in plastic. I don't think they're going to do another box set this soon after uh, after the drop. I really don't. Um. So I I could see yeah, that, so a. Go ahead, John. I was going to say that they they've been doing like medium sized box sets with Kill Team and uh, 40k, where it's not the full three hundred dollar box. It's like a two fifty or two hundred dollar box. But those usually come out every year or six eight months. So if we're gonna get one, it's not gonna be the the same box we just got. Like it's not gonna be the same scale wise, like Spartan and forty dudes and Terminators and two characters and Dreadnought. It could you even could it could like even be that. that or them. Yeah, it's possible that we maybe get like a a not marine box. Being speculative, I doubt we'll get it. I'll throw a giant wad of salt at this, but we could get a a not marine box. Get like. Throw a couple 40k kits in there and call it militia or call it solar rocks and then we get some demon stuff i've been seeing some rumblings online about de demons becoming the the super army that can cross all lines they were already but yeah and and the the 40k like today's the 40k models was those size boxes right when they had the white scars and whatever yeah. so, hey Duncan, i'm looking at those two pictures side by side and the guns wrong, wrong for them to be both both the same model so I'm looking at the exact same pictures, and you're right. But it's a similar style pose. I think yeah, that's what got yeah. me confused. Yeah. So, I, I, if some of these models came out last, last edition, I would be super, super thrilled. Um, that's not saying I'm not happy that we're getting plastic of these models. I think that's fantastic for for the growth of the game. Um, but, like, with the, uh, the Typhoon that just came out and the Spartan Laser Destroyer thingy to Bob, those are... the not fun units to play currently in this edition because they pay the super heavy tax without any of the super heavy benefit. Um, bikes are okay, I guess, in this edition. Depends on how you run them um, or who you run them as. Like Night Lord bikes, I think, have some play, but it's hard. I'm hard pressed to put bikes in anything else. Yeah, or, scars are good with them too. But yeah, ultramarines or just somebody that's generic like that, they're not that. Good. Yeah. So. Uh... I kind of like bikes and world leaders a little bit. Not as much as I did last edition, but they're okay. So I was definitely, um, just to circle back to, to John and Dan's kind of earlier point, I was relatively confident that whenever we see our first campaign splat book, that we might see a start collecting or kill team sized box. Um, and we've seen this a couple times in 40k as well, where sometimes they'll put a simplified version of a kit into the bundle box just to get it onto the market. And then later, when they re-release the whole thing, that's when you end up with, with the kit that's got the other odds and ends sprues. Um, and so it's totally possible that depending on what that campaign splat ends up being, we might be able to see, like, a set of plastic jet bikes with... Um, 
a javelin and maybe we get an official quote-unquote character sculpt uh not necessarily a named character but like praetor on jet bike so that you get something a little more flashy a little more ornate um to um to to end up seeing there um whether or not that's what we do could go either way but that that was something that had crossed my mind was that if they wanted to drip feed out kits uh, especially if they could get two or three kits that play together for a box like that i could totally see it yeah they could even do a a battle force and do white scars versus demons and demon throw some 40k demon models in there and... i absolutely think that if we see a splat book if we see a campaign update book before we see militia and demons get standalone books uh people might riot yeah i'm willing to be one of them yeah mm -hmm. i we talk about timelines and roadmaps and the fact that that we have demons and militia players who still have no idea when they'll be able to play the game or at least be able to play those armies that they like that they enjoy um extremely yeah, frustrating and i really hope that we can get that fixed sooner rather than later even even if we can just get like we used to have or or like we got when uh the new edition of heresy released when they said hey here's what you're looking at for the next three to six months um i think that would do a lot to help um but without that just a lot well, I mean, there's units not even that came in the word bearers rules for the rich box set that you still are original release. You can't use because they summon demons and there's not much point in taking them if you're not going to be able to summon demons. So it's not even just demon players, word bearers as well. Yep. Very true. Very true. I agree with that. Yeah. And if that, so, that console is an esoterist, it's useless to make one if he ain't got nobody to summon. So maybe we are seeing the inklings of a upcoming. Yeah, I'd, like to, I'd love to see another roadmap. What's um, when's LVO? That's coming up relatively soon, right? Uh, is the last week of January. They usually do a decent presence there, right? Games Workshop. Uh, they have been, yeah. I think I wonder, so, yeah. So I don't, I don't think they've done any there. reveals there before. I think Adepticon's always been traditional beginning of the year release stuff for them. Yeah, yeah, it has. They have a, GW has a presence at LVO, but I don't think they do a lot of big anything. But that's, did they normally? What was the one they they did the releases at this? I didn't remember before. No. Yeah, had they done Nola releases before t this year? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, they do pretty much two big ones: um, Adepticon and then Nova itself. And I think there's a uh, there's just been kind of a, a scandal in 40k stuff lately, to where I don't think the LVO is really in that good of a shape, to where people are actually likely to be happy with GW right now, or G where GW is not really happy with people right now. So I don't think that a, a drop or anything new released there is actually all that likely. Well, so that takes us on to um, uh, a, a interesting piece of scuttlebutt, and, and it's definitely going to complicate uh, Games Workshop's calendar. Um, if if we're correct in some of what we're seeing now, which is that uh, a new edition of 40k may be coming as soon as June, um, that would definitely, to me, complicate their ability, unless Sigmar is just kinda along for the ride this year. I would find it very difficult to believe that they are gonna do a new edition of 40k and be in a position to support that new edition, whatever shape or form it takes. Um, while being able to both give heresy its due, if that makes sense, uh, as well as to be able to look at their calendar and say, okay, well, what, what announcements do we make at LVO? What announcements do we make at, um, at Adepticon? Uh, and if I had to bet, unfortunately, if it is June that we're getting a new edition of 40k, I bet that that will actually take their Adepticon announcement slot, and I don't know if Heresy will end up seeing it. That's a valid point. Um, yeah, although they, I mean, they had some 40k announcements and very minimal AOS, and then announced the new version of Heresy at Adepticon at their preview last year. They just touched on all of it quickly, right? 10-15 minutes per game. Right. You know, the the calendar year thing's an interesting one, because the June date, right? They 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 run a July to June fiscal year, so it'll be interesting to see the plan is for them to drop new 40k right at June first or the first week of June, 
um to try and get a whole bunch of sales to finish the, their fifth strong you might and and you'd probably know that in their first quarter um filings because they part of their uh quarterly preview for what their performance sections are for their fourth quarter our second. i'm i'm also looking at this from a historical track record i don't think we have seen games workshop do large releases for tentpole systems multiple to a year. And I yeah. don't know if these campaign books, if they are real, I don't know if they want to treat them like codex level things or something like uh, on the level of what the end times for both 40k and fantasy were, where they were a little more robust than a codex. I would hope for something similar to the end times ones. Or even um, something similar to what they're doing with the various campaign books that they keep dropping right now for 40k, where they're involved and they touch on everything somehow. Um, something like that I'd be actually kind of a fan of. So everybody knows that there's several Battletech um, fans in this pod podcast. Oh, yeah. Keep every name, you know, to themselves. Um, I just got done listening to Critical Rocket cover the... Uh, I think Galf Gore campaign is an old uh, Secession War source uh, uh, campaign book. I would love for them to do something like that where this is heresy and it has the you know units you know un lines of battles and and breakdowns for all that. I would love something that deep. Uh, I don't know that heresy will ever deliver on that minutia the same way that BattleTech does, and I think some of that is because of heresy's problem and like i i don't want to just point this at being a heresy problem this is kind of a uh like games workshop hyperbole problem where because everything is supposed to be so much larger than life and so unfathomable that the idea for them to pin everything down to give us even a battle tech level of here's how this campaign went seems unlikely they I did give us those books they did they're called the black books Right, but I guess I was never under the impression that those were those were as detailed as as Battletech. That's not to say that I I disagree as far as like I want to see more black book quality publications. Um uh and and we even saw before Heresy did the black books where we had the entire uh what was it the um the Badab Wars that everybody loves so much as as kind of a precursor to Heresy. We know that there He's are things like the Siege of Rex as well. Yep. There, there is the capacity for those to exist, but we're now going on a couple of years without having seen anything on that level, especially as after Bly's passing, even some of the Black Books started to slide in quality. Well, none of those are, I mean, the Black Books and the Dab and all the Imperial Armors aren't GW, they're Forge World. So the grand question is, I know they're all in the same building, but GW seems to treat them like they're a separate entity. So the it, question is going to be who's which, which team members are actually on that team. Yeah, who's go. who's helming the ship for Heresy going forward? Yeah. Speaking of that, did we talk about uh, Forge Roll changing their Facebook page to uh, Horus Heresy? Yeah, is that that we sure before. can now. They've done it before, though. I mean, they did the same thing. I want to say in the early two thousands, they switched to Horus Heresy, and then they came back to Forge World, and then I don't know. I don't. I don't. Changing a Facebook name to me isn't that. Maybe it's the boomer. Everybody has a little boomer in them. Yep. Um, has anyone looked at Forge World's uh, website lately? Um, I can. Give me a second. The only on direct days, link I search what I want to look at and go directly to the site. Gotcha. Yeah. They haven't changed anything to signify why they made that change to the actual uh, Facebook page. I really don't understand that. Have they actually changed it on the Facebook page yet? They mentioned the fact that they want each game system to have its own facebook presence so that you can have one place to go to get heresy news one place to go to get necromunda news one place to go to get x but that being said there's not a necromunda official account. there's not there's not a lord of the ring strategy battle game 14 other characters that go in this sentence long list facebook page there's yeah only a 40k an age of sigmar and a horse heresy there's only those and warhammer so, community yeah they 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 haven't changed the the, the facebook name name yet so it's still Forge World. No, they did. They they flat out. It was. They said it's coming. A while. I guess they said it's coming back. soon. Uh, oh, I don't know. Then I just I, I was under the impression the day they did that they they uh, dropped that announcement that was the day they were actually making the change. Uh, see, I I didn't see this until days later. So I don't know. It, it's it seems like 
Games Workshop themselves is in a state of flux. Things are changing, and not everyone quite knows what's going on. Um, it's kind of odd. It's like the marketing partner is doing one thing, the um, the game the design is doing another, sales yeah. partner is doing something different, and then corporate's doing a make more money now thing. Yeah, yeah it's kind of well, odd. Speaking of of interesting things that Games Workshop is doing, one of the things that we got announced this week too is that. Uh, Warhammer TV is going to be featuring a uh, Horus Heresy battle report. So we will get to see officially sanctioned Horus Heresy play and uh, see is how that, don't, that goes. I, but, I am so scared that I have wished on a monkey's paw because we're actually getting official bat reps. Is that going to be free to everyone or is it going to be uh, pay to play? It's it's part of their stream. So so if you've never done it, I think you can get a free preview. But I believe that we talked about doing a watch party as a podcast group. And yeah, that's, uh, that's that's could we don't know when that is. That could be yeah, six months. Sure. But I think that I like that idea and then we all form our opinions and take notes and talk about it on a cast after I don't think we record us watching because yeah. that would be and, uh, oh, have we uh another thing we might want to mention is the fact that Great Britain is going to officially recognize Warhammer in a stamp form. Allegedly. So that, that's Allegedly. Kind of into the, the, the idea that they're coming out with the new edition is they've released <coughs> a listing of all the special monthly stamps ahead of So, So I have to say, and I know Warhammer or Warhammer 40k, but that's pretty cool. I mean, we, we all started playing miniatures games long enough ago that it was a really, really niche universe and niche hobby. And for something to get big enough to where, you know, Great Britain is going to actually have a postage stamp that will sell to the general public featuring the game is uh, a testament to how much the, the game and our little niche nerddom has grown into the mainstream. And I think that's pretty cool, regardless, you know, putting that, you know, we, we may not... Uh, agree with everything Games Workshop does, but they've created something that, and I know there's other miniature games and miniature things out there, but let's face it, Games Workshop has been the driver commercial uh, miniature wargaming, and the fact that miniature wargaming is coming to the point where that's a thing is pretty cool to see. I, I think that speaks to, really it speaks to the community, which is what we come to play Horus Heresy for, but overall it speaks to just miniature wargaming. That's my It'll be interesting to see what's on it. My guess is they're going to have to choose artwork. So, for instance, uh, the the day of Queen Elizabeth's death, they released a set of Transformers postage stamps, G1 Transformers, and it was uh, five different artworks that they had that they repeated three times on a sheet. Hmm. Uh, and I picked that up kind of, well, because I'm a Transformers nut and because of the special occasion of their release. So it'll be interesting to see what artwork is on there and how many pieces of artwork they have and... If Heresy gets skimped again, because we haven't been on the official calendars and all the other official GW limited what it's in releases and things. And, uh, cool. May just be drawing a blank about, yeah, wondering what day and what, what they're going to select. I You almost wonder if they're going to try to keep it, like, very top level. I don't know how detailed they want to get on a stamp, but, uh, you know, how how detailed did, uh, did the Transformers art end up being? It, it wasn't the same. It was the same characters as the cartoon, but it wasn't... Like cartoon art, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was, it was redraws of Megatron and Starscream and Grimlock, but there wasn't a lot of background noise. There wasn't a lot of stuff like that. So I could see like a Space Marine helmet or an Aquila or a the the hammer or a new logo stuff like that. I could see doing. I'm not gonna see. I don't think we're gonna see like the Imperial Palace or one of the Heresy book covers or Mortarian or something like that. No, yeah, that's that's where I was like, you know, okay, I could maybe see like. The double-headed Aquila, maybe something vaguely um, Sigmar-themed going they might on. shy away from the Aquila. Um, oh, that's fair, yeah. They it, might do something of, like the Eye of Horus. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people, for some reason, think that the Aquila is a little nazzy, but... I'd be surprised if there's not an Ultramarine on one somewhere. Right. Fair. I could see that. Because they're striking color. Primaris now. Lieutenant. Tactical Rock. Yes, that will actually oh, probably man, be yeah. all the stamps is you, the Tactical Rock. You bring up Tactical Rock and somebody's like, man, I don't know, that might not actually be Exodus. And I was just like, he has a Nemesis Bolt thing or something analogous to one and he has a Tactical. He's definitely... It fits. It fits. It's either that or somehow we're going to get a Primaris Lieutenant in 30k. See a time travel sent backwards by the Eldar? 
Uh, Drum Maris was in has yeah. a tactical rock. Depending on which fluff we were retconning this week, we were there. Oh, Lord. There was one of them that was talking about how Gulliman himself showed him around the 500 worlds before Gulliman was resurrected. I... Okay, okay, so we've we've now retconned such that uh, Dante was not the oldest living space marine, and Bjorn the, fa uh, Bjorn the Fellhanded is not the oldest space marine loyalist. Yep. Yeah, yeah, That I think that's why that one got retconned pretty quick. Okay, uh, so they unretconned it again? Yeah. It was it was it was come it was one of the first in like Siege of the Imperium or something like that books the the first Plague War or whatever it was but yeah that I think that guy has never been referenced again I haven't I honestly stopped listening to most of the 40k books because it's just there's one there's a lot coming out now and two I I, I really yeah it, yeah the only books I care about from GW right now are 40k or not 40k unless it's um, the Eisenhorn continuation stuff with the Owls of Banquin or the Gaunt's Ghosts. Yeah, and then or, a, I want to get into. The, I've I've got them. I just haven't listened to them yet. Some of the horror books sound pretty good. Haven't so, tried any of those, but I do like. I, I did like the Abaddon first two that uh, ADB did. If he does more of those, I'll I'll read those. Yeah, kind of. But um, yeah, the the forty k books were like talking about how um, Algram outsmarted Gulliman because he knew that Gulliman would do the smart thing, and so instead he did the dumb thing. And so because he prepared for the dumb thing, he outsmarted Gulliman just the right time. Um, but that's how he trapped Gulliman into chopping his neck off. John, but, you've you've already said it. Um, pe people cannot write smarter smarter than what they are. I know, I know, I get that. It's a thing that I do, and, and Duncan and I have this trouble too because we are in a group with an author that we both love and actually talks back to people about how much research he does into smart things. Um, yeah. But... <clears throat> Comparing him to this stuff, it really, at times it really hurts. But yeah. That, that guy was retconned out. I think they've retconned a couple more do 40 K things. Well, they, they retconned that uh, predators can't have last cannon uh, turrets because the space wolves did them in the scour after the scouring campaign or 3,400 or we have predators with uh last cannon to send heresy. Yeah. And I, I don't know, weapons have always been weird to me. Like, oh, no one thought about duct taping 30 bolt guns together and sticking it to the side of a Land Raider before. <laughs> them, well, I just remember the angry Gullivan tweets from when they woke him up and he's like, we put bolters on a Land Raider? What are we, farmers? <laughs> Man, I love that tweet. Spicy Gullivan is spicy. Man, I, I remember when Fantasy Flight published Death Watch and they were like, oh, by the way, once you're wearing Terminator armor, you get a separate, like, requisition page that you have to talk to the DM about because normal guns are not honorable enough for Terminator armor. And I was like, okay, you know, that's one way to, to ex uh, explain or understand the fluff of the game where, like, Terminators just can't certain things, but just seeing that, like, oh yeah, the Land Raider's way too honorable a vehicle. Why would you ever put bolt guns on it? I mean, he's not really Ain't wrong. Actually, now I'm wondering how many things that got laid out in Death Watch and some of those Fantasy Flight games, how many of those have been retconned? Because since... Fantasy Flight lost that license, and Games Workshop doesn't seem to be in a hurry to replace them anytime soon. Well, they've I'm... got their new uh, Everybody Can Play RP that's based on a D6 system. It's really terrible. Oh, yeah, because Games Workshop's just like, what do we know our players have? D6s? Yep. Yeah, I Pretty bought much. The... I bought the edition of the, I bought the first edition of that flip case and everything and came in and I was reading I was like, well, I'm never going to get anyone to play this. Because the whole game is D66 and uh, D6 based and it's balanced in such a way that everyone can play at the same time. So your team can be a guardsman, private, space marine captain, an arcoflagellant, sister battle. Let's say you can make a decent game system with all D6s because early Shadowrun, well, no, actually early Shadowrun system, it just, never mind. Yeah, it was the it was the power imbalances and wanting to get everyone in the same time. And then I read more, and he goes like, "Oh, this is just a, a never-ending font of terrible ideas." At least they didn't it's... do a LARP, 40k LARP. What was it? I think it was the sixth and seventh edition Chaos Codexes, both Marines and Demons, where it was like, "Oh, cool! At the beginning of each turn, you need to roll one d6. That d6, based on this chart, will tell you which other chart to go to." where then you'll roll 2d6 and see what you get on that chart. And I was like, so you're telling me that in order to resolve this random effect, I have to look at three or four separate tables, and you want me to pay points for this upgrade that I cannot control. 
and all the effects are fairly mediocre until or unless you roll like doubles and then it like goes crazy and it cascades and you create five more new effects and then you're like cool so now i'm now i'm at battle tech levels of i have to have an eight and a half by 11 printout just for how my demon prince works i think i yeah, have five points over there. Upgrade. it's five points and upgrade and there's only six rolls so you might as well just prop 30 points down so you get all the options yep yep the limits of the D6 increasingly becoming apparent to us, but not to certain other folks. That's fine. I cannot be too mad. We did weed a lot of the randomness out of heresy. You don't roll for psychic powers. You don't roll for warlord traits. Very glad those are both gone. I I will not look this gift horse any further in the mouth. I did love the, the army I built based in ruins and a commander taking cover behind ruins and giving orders to troops to move out through ruins and then roll my warlord trait and I got... Guy who attacks farms. It's ruins. Never touched them in his life. <laughs> that's that's why for the last two or three years, uh, even before the new edition change, like the number one request I had from players was please, please just let us select our own Lord traits. And I was yep. like, all right, that's fine. Have fun. Yep. Hey, I'm pretty sure that's the biggest thing we all wanted. Jump in fact, in. that may be the only thing at the end that we were all hoping they would change. Well, psychic, I think so. Yeah, but we knew that yeah, wasn't going to change. We were just wanting these to be selectable. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, jumping back to new releases, we didn't talk about um, Word Bear Beaky cast, did we? I don't uh, think we did. I don't think so. We may have, but anyway, we can sure talk about them now. I think they're pretty cool. I like the, uh, they've got the runes engraved in the, the shoulder pads and the helmets, uh, like so the old upgrades used to have. I was, uh, as a word bearer player, I don't have anything I'm going to build uh, Mark Six is for right now, but if I ever build another unit for that army and build Mark Six models for it, I will definitely pick me up some of them. I was, um, I thought they were on the, the, the plus end of the scale for those. I was pretty happy. Um, I know someone mentioned um, they thought they looked um, potentially a uh, thousand suns E. Um, which I don't know that I would disagree with necessarily, but um, I I like them. Yeah, I thought the the compressed JPEG when it got uploaded to Facebook almost made them look like Oni Man. If you look at them close, they were. So am I right that we're down to just Alpha Legion and Raven Guard, or are there more missing? I think that's it. Oh, did they do White Scars? Yes. Yep. World Eaters. Uh, got yeah, we did do World Eaters. I thought we did. I could have sworn. Yeah, I'm saying yeah, we. Right. Yeah. They had like they the 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 bunny ears. Yeah, they were the ones after the. Those uh, actually been released? No, they've been previewed, just like the Elder ones. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say I haven't seen those heads at all. I thought they right. Were I bit. guess I guess we haven't previewed them in Alpha Legion bits. Well, the 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 world eaters were the ones I think that came right after Space Wolf, so they were had to be. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's not really hard to be. You say that. You know what? You're right. I did say it. But yeah, I think you're right. I think those are maybe the only two. Gotta bide my time. <laughs> well, we all oh. know Ultramarines, or not Ultramarines, but Alpha is going to go last because, well. Well, yeah. Um. So I, I did want to bring something up that we saw pop up in uh, the uh, Accountability chat, where uh, I believe was it... Uh, Chris Bergeron uh, ended up finding out that there were some spare treads left on the sprue from his Sakaran. There was that, yes. So what are we saying that meaning? It means because I have not been been around for that one. So I uh, initially, some people were like, "Oh man, is this is this the fast transport that's like supposed to not be a land raider?" And I had to kind of remind people that like that was. That the was one a came up fan with. creation by Ryan. Yeah, and Nick. Yeah, and a couple of people built it too. Yeah, and that that was built for a game where we didn't want to make any changes to Land Raiders or uh, Andalus, and to try to introduce something that would let your HQ, uh, your HQ choice, ride with either. Uh, five terminators or 10 artificers so his command squad uh and still be able to make it to battle 
Um, and I think the problem has kind of been burned at both ends this edition, with the basic Land Raider moving to capacity 12, and with the Anvilus uh, having been uh, done as dead and dirty as it has been done, um, I would not immediately anticipate the need for another transport that would be built on the Sakaran chassis. So my first thought was, I wonder if this is for... Um, plastic Mechanicum. I don't know, the sprue said Sakarin on the edge of the sprue. I mean, that, I guess that doesn't mean they can't dual use it, but... They actually be coming up with an original Sakarin uh, version? Variant? You know... The laser one. You know, you know, I know right now it's it's very much almost exactly the same as the normal Sakarin, but they could make it different. I don't think it'll be Sakarin, actually. I wonder if they'll do a variant on the um, the, the the stupid new tank. Kratos? Kratos? That. I, you know, I, the the treads are different widths, though, aren't they? Yeah, they are. But they're wider than a Sakarin's tank, treads, noticeably. Yes, the ones that are left about, over? No, they're I the thought... same size as Sakarin tracks. So we're talking about, on the Sakarin sprue, there are extra Sakarin tracks. That will not make a Kratos... Oh, yeah, I'm going back to the picture. I thought it, they were actually bigger than the others. If Has anyone more, else built a plastic Sakarin, or, you know, is it possible that... Chris had two sprues and just was drinking too much German beer. Nah. Just kidding, Chris. I love you. Because I know he'll listen in here. Wonder how far back in our chat is this picture, I wonder. Um, you all talked entirely too much. That's that's what it is. Your your best bet's using them. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm using. <laughs> well then that's... then you gotta deal with, with the meme spam. Hey, nothing's wrong with meme spam. I participate in that happily. I didn't say there was anything wrong. I just said you gotta deal with it. He feels attacked, and he doesn't appreciate it. Oh, see, now I'm looking at a, this picture of meat inside of a smoker again, and I'm just hungry. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I found the picture again. Yeah, never mind. I thought these were actually larger than regular Sakarin tread, but they're not. I cannot find that Sakarin on, on, on uh, Forge World anymore. The plastic one or the, oh, the resin one? Yeah. Well, and here's the thing. Unless they make changes to the Venator to where the treads are, like, exposed and wrap all the way around, I don't even see how, even though that, that would be a different chassis or a different box, I don't see how that could use the extra track piece. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe they redesigned it some. What about that. what about the the new um, gun platform things they made that are the reverse kind of Sakaran thing? Oh, the Arkeeter? I suppose it's possible. I haven't seen an Arkeeter in person, uh, but I do know those are a pretty new... Those are oh, maybe three years old, so uh, I mean, it's possible that demand has been so high, but I feel like the price on those models for them kind of just being whatever on the tabletop uh, has has probably kept them from wearing the molds out. Are they in the? Are they actually in the rule book, or are they in the legacy PDF too? They're in the rule uh, book. They are in the real oh, okay. rule book, uh, and that is part of why. Um, the Legion Medusa and Legion Basilisk got shoved to the Legacies PDF, uh, much to the dismay of several Iron... And the bomb part is still there on the actual website. Yeah, the, the Iron Fire actually mentions Medusa and Basilisk, which made it funny that it's in the Legacies PDF when you're mentioning that it should exist as part of a right of war. It's just like the uh, word bearers and demons and things like that. It's more GW, being GW. Yep. That thing is still ugly. Or they just know you screw up tracks so much that they're giving you extra tracks in the kit, and it's just a quality of life thing. Wait, no, that doesn't make any sense. That, that doesn't work. It's GW. They don't do quality of life. That's awful nice of them, and I don't think what we think. Well, outside of this continued speculation, uh, did we have other points to bring up or talk over? Um, did we want to mention, I know someone said that, that or Jack said he tried to order it, and it actually wasn't available on the website, but there was a... Uh, a non Games Workshop release that I'm pretty excited about, and I'm hoping to uh, have one brought over from England at Adepticon, and that is Little Legend Studios, who has already put out a couple of other models. And I don't remember if we've talked about them on the podcast or not, but I know uh, Duncan has painted up one of them, I believe. Yeah, the uh, Faceless did. Knight, the Definitely Not Horus Axiomund. Yes, Definitely Not Horus Axiomund. 
but uh they put out a pretty um pretty cool looking in my opinion ultramarine predator uh non ultramarine ultramarine predator uh that was up for sale at some point this weekend and it may have been sold out and i don't know if that indicates an initial run or if it's gonna you know there it was a limited model or what but uh I thought that was a pretty cool model. Um, I was impressed with it. And like I said, I'm weaseling my way because uh, Miles is supposed to be coming over and um, to Adepticon and teaching some classes and probably providing some prize support. Um, so I was hoping to get one. And I know uh, one of our other Ultramarine players, Zach, also mentioned in the same chat we had with Miles that um, we're both interested in getting one of those. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I ordered one when it came out. Yeah, I figured I could wait to not pay shipping, hopefully. So. That's a reasonable statement. Hmm. Yeah, that's the only other thing I had to bring up. I wanted to bring up. Oh, we didn't we also get a uh a, did we get a date for the uh the next heresy novel? Is that gonna be the last one or is this next to last? They split the last oh. book into two. Oh we got the map is coming out next weekend. Mm -hmm. Which is part of that novel, but they didn't say that the novel's gonna they just gotcha. announced a bunch of audio books dropping, 40K audio books that are dropping that. Gotcha. I didn't know if they had actually announced the book and I had missed it or not. Man, you want to talk about stuff that's been a minute coming. This last novel, like, I I guess congratulations, like, you beat Winds of Winter, but that's a, that's a low bar to clear for the fact that you've been talking about this book for how long? And you're even like, hey, by the way, it's going to be a two-parter. Right, okay, so when is this book that we've been talking about coming out? Well, it's two parts now. Uh, you can blame ADV for all of that. They can't write the next book until he was finished, and then he had some stuff go That on. is correct, yeah, he, he did, and he was very upfront about that. But it's, I I don't know. I This is probably a projection from just earlier. We talk about things so early when we have no details that we're ready to share. Other than to just be like, "Hey, give us your money someday," and it yeah, and I, it I just think wears GW, on me. GW needs to learn from the video game industry, and they learned from the the hype train of the video game industry. And that's all they've really taken from the fact that, well, if we start this hype train, people will be totally jazzed to buy stuff when it comes in, and then that's all they care about. They they don't understand that that hype train comes with it some some mighty baggage, and the fact that if we don't have product by when we think we should have product by, and it starts hurting. February 28th, The End of the Death, Volume 1, hardcover, February 28th, 2023. So almost two months. Yep. But you can order it on Amazon right now for $27, which is $3 off list price for the hardcover. Well, that's that's the heart, the Amazon ship date? Yep. So, okay, so, how so many... in that case, it's probably early February when the fancy leather edition. How many, heresy, how many heresy novels are there? Uh, uh, like the whole series? 50 and then 12? No, no, God, no, no, it's there's 60 in the main series, then there's the 20 Primark novels, and then the 12 novellas, and then the 12 little novellas came out in the middle there. There's going to be nine total Siege of, Her uh, Siege of Terror novels, and that's not counting like the Fear the Wrath of Magnus or Fury of Magnus or the Winding of Magnus or the Sons of Selenar. They all did it. You also just waited and read them. Yeah. And I'm reading them because I have like, I'm like 40 novels behind or more so. Yes, Dan, like, but you see, we got into reading them. For, I started reading them pretty much like a month after the start of the series. And I, I pounded through um, Warhawk and Mortis back to back on a driving trip a couple months ago. And I'm going to Jones and fix one before I forget what happened. I just finished Vulcan Lives. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit, even though it's weird. I still so I think that yeah. is going to be my challenge to you guys who have read those books. Put together your essentials reading list, and uh, so next show we'll do Emperor's Children's Unit, and uh, two shows from now we'll uh, we'll sit down and we'll do the definitive Cliff Notes. Uh, here's the quickest and dirtiest way through the heresy. Are we actually going to do the the essential reading of heresy? I think we should. We've we've talked about it and teased it at least once, and uh, given that e even if there was one out there previously, um, if it hasn't been written down or committed to time and memory, then uh, everything not saved is lost. Do you still... Do you know if you can get a copy of Ryan's Essential Reading Order? I can sure hit him up for one, just to see if he's still got it. See if he still has it. Because I think his is going to be different than all of ours. I, but I, I think like it would. I see what but... his original idea was. 
yeah but you get the where like not only to to bandy about with you guys but uh yeah just uh just to see if given the direction heresy has taken if some of those may have changed in value where it's just like oh that was a great book but it's just been completely retconned out of con uh out of relevancy oh i had gotten the list but it wasn't it was the order of everything, but it had everything in it. So if you were going to read everything, this was the order to read it. There wasn't anything in what I had gotten anyway that was like, oh, these are really important and these aren't. Um, it was grouping some of the storylines together. So like you'd follow a couple of the Dark Angels books together at the same time, um, but in a way that made sense sequentially. So you were never reading anything out of a sequential order. Um, but it didn't have, or at least what I got didn't have, uh, these are skipping. These are must read. These are really good. This is going to be a drag, but it tells a good story. Or you need to read it. That the sort sequential of stuff. order would be um, looked like a London train map. Yeah, it all would. Over the place. yeah. They actually put out the sequential order and all the lines. And mm -hmm. If you want to read just the Ultramarines line that they put out, out a couple years ago. Yeah. Forcefully or Black Library. Yeah, they haven't updated it since. Yeah. I only have. The Duncan list, that's the ones I hadn't already read, so it skips some mandatory because I had already read it. Cool. Yeah, we can figure something out on this. Yep. Cool. Gives us a couple of episode ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, now that we've gotten our current crop previews, are we still, are, do we want to change any of our bets from the last episode? Uh, do people think that we will get Militia and Demons in the first half of this year? Are we not going to hear anything about them until Adepticon? What's, uh, I still what's your Black bet? Shield. I still want Black Shield. I, I think we'll get them this That would be my guess. I, I think everything ooh, for this sure by quarter one year. This, well, this quarter is three months. I mean, that's not, that's that shouldn't be that hard of a, a push since they were already delivered. <laughs> My only concern to... there is, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know about first quarter, but I think we'll see everything by one year. Every piece no. playable. So whatever no. the original release was. Hold on a second. We had the Astartes and Hereticus books drop pretty synonymously with the main box. How long did we wait to get the Mechanicus book? Was it two months or three? Four. And then it was a month after that, or two months after that, for the uh, the Custodes. Mm -hmm. Was it was it four just in the U.S. or was it four for for the full release? I think it was three and then an extra. Month. And then it was three for uh, the custodies, or was it two after the mechanical for the custodies? Uh, it was on the month was the custodes release. So that would mean February for potential solar ox or demons. Militia or demons, solar oxes. Yeah, sorry, I'm not bad. Militia or demons or both. Well, they still mm. haven't talked about... I mean, the, the preview never had a Demons book. Everything with Demons was a PDF, right? No. Yes. Yeah, Demons so and, I think Solar Ox and Black Shields are the two that we'll see books for, and I still think PDF dropping. Didn't we get... Mind and what money. I think maybe I'm talking at cross purpose here. I thought they said that we were going to get... No, maybe, maybe they did say we're going to get them in PDF format. Maybe I am wrong. Yeah. Everything on the roadmap with release, I Except think... Except for that, the, the little PDF icons, yeah. Yeah. Well, we got some sort of PDF. It just wasn't necessarily what we thought was. I mm. suppose you could say that, that they just had a PDF icon on the thing. And because they said Militia was a PDF, we assumed that. Yeah, saying, we got a PDF of Legacy. Yeah. That's, if they did that, then first of all, let's do it that way. I mentioned specifically that you're coming out with PDFs for models. And then to put PDFs in your diagram and then to go, oh, no, we meant the other piece. <laughs> that's, that's underhand, but sadly it would make sense. It would. There is one other thing I'd like to make mention of, and this is something I don't know if anyone else has seen this. Um, anyone else seen the uh, recent pictures of uh, of Gav? He no longer looks like a... Uh, sorry, not Gav Thorpe. Um, what's the name of the, the, the guy who we all griped yeah. at? Look, said looked like a... Uh, yeah, Andy Hoare, my bad. Yeah, not Gav Thorpe, Andy Hoare. Recent pictures of him no longer look like a meth addict. So, um, found out why that was. If you follow him on Instagram, he went to Three Week Renfest. And got way too much sun. Oh, so he's not actually on meth. Yeah. Well, like Penzig. Yeah. Yeah. He went nuts because he's British. They don't understand how what sun does to skin. And so he just baked and burned himself over and over and over again. Speaking as a bald man, there's a reason I wear a hat. Yep. Okay. We got anything else tonight, guys? Can't wait to see you all in Chicago at Adepticon. Come see me. Oh. It's going to be great heresy. 
the Adepticon event list is fully dropped. Yes, yeah, have. and uh, mm-hmm. we're this hoping they have be out before sign up. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, it comes sign up starts on the seventh. Um, oh man, it'd be fun trying to sign up through my phone while I'm at an event with horrible cell phone reception. Seventh or eighth? Uh, was it Saturday or Sunday? I thought it was Sunday. It's either way. It's while I'm there. Yeah. But uh, Lucas is helping take over what Coleman was running, uh, and Zach and, and you're running some stuff too. Yeah, it's Sunday. Thank you. There's a little bit of little bit of heresy for pretty much how everyone wants to play narrative style. Um, no, kick your teeth in tournament heresy stuff. Um, there's a big game where you can bring your Titan heavy narrative and the Beta Garmin, whatever you're on. Beta Garmin running into that attrition tag team zone mortalis event. Uh, link narratives in the taking of Pyrex. Uh, that is going to run. Um, with uh david coleman's fiance fiance right. with her i guess his permission and blessing and she's all for that she definitely wants a legacy so um, that's really cool really cool um just a big open play on saturday where you sign up it won't be heavy narrative it'll just find someone you want to throw some dice with and throw dice um not even worried about loyalist uh heretics or anything like that just find someone and throw some dice. more details at adepticon website it's gonna be awesome no matter what yeah well, with all of that having been said, and with all of that to look forward to, I've been Jacob, and this episode, I've been joined by... Duncan. Jack. John. And we're glad you joined us. Remember, stay accountable to your hobby and to your buddies, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.